So if this new set is all about wagering and making gold for winning your arena fights, doesn't it kind of make sense that cash in would be a good option there? You destroy the gold you make, you draw two cards. It's also possible that LSS gave us these cold foil cash ins in the last judge pack, put the gold foil uh, gold token on the prize wall at uh, recent battle hardens and things like that not because of dromai or because of these royal heroes that are out but maybe they had a something else in mind and that something else was heavy hitters and all of the gold and silver and all the shenanigans that come along with that uh i i think cash in decently priced it's only about five bucks for the cheapest copy on the market cheapest rainbow on the market is about 13 dollars bit more expensive but um I definitely think it's worth investing into. Every game that has a Pot of Greed type ability is always good. I used to play this in Briar. Fantastic card. Chef's Kiss. A+. Plus. I absolutely love it. So if it could see play again, I will definitely be dusting off the old copies. But yeah, for you know, 10 bucks for a play set of non-foils here, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, Rouse the Ancients. We're getting Brute and we're getting uh, Guardian. Brute, Guardian, Warrior, right? And Warrior obviously isn't going to count, but Brute and Guardian all have a ton of huge attacks, right? That's like the core of their game plan. Uh, so it makes sense that Rouse the Ancients would be played in both the decks. The Warrior cards are a bit harder to call because all of them say like, if your axe hits, then do this. Or if your opponent blocks your sword attack, do this. Or give a dagger plus whatever. And it's just too hard to know what the new Warrior is going to use. So you can invest in all these Warrior cards, but just take it with that grain of salt and that we don't know what weapon it's going to use it's also entirely possible that it doesn't use any of the existing weapons and it uses like a trident in a net right it uses like the classic retiari combo uh so it's 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 totally possible that none of the support even helps it at all uh one card i just do think is flying a little bit too under the radar for like years now is hatchet of mind and body this isn't a bolton card and people maybe kind of forget that axe's dory was a thing at one point I just didn't quite have enough support to be successful. And, uh, you know, throwing one weapon attack just doesn't quite cut it anymore. I envision a world where Warrior pretty much has to attack twice every turn, has to be using two weapons. It's totally possible that this card isn't played. This is probably one of the more risky specs. But, again, this one's playing double duty, similar to some of the cards in the last video. Even if the new Warrior doesn't play this, that's not to say Bolton will never play this. There will never be another Axes, you know, Warrior out there again. Uh, so yeah, double duty. The new hero might play it. Bolton might play it. Seems like a solid card. Dig Up Dinner is like low-key one of the best brute cards that came out of detail, uh, Dust Till Dawn. For those who don't know what it does, shuffle three cards in the grave. Anything with six or more power you put back, you gain a life for, and it's a blue block three, right? So this is a remembrance that blocks three, is blue, and is a sigil all packed into one. Uh, this card's low-key kind of cracked. <laughs> uh, cheapest rainbow on the market is $1.50. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't talk about the hatchets either. The hatchets are like 8 or 9 bucks each. I think it's all good pickups, uh, but particularly Dig Up Dinner I think is a good one. Just a couple bucks each. Get yourself a play set of those. They could definitely be good, particularly if the new brute takes a slower stance or if it is fatigable and needs to combat that. Uh, you know, there's a few different ways that this card could come up and see play. It doesn't right now because brutes just don't typically go to fatigue in their current builds, but we just don't know what the new Brute has in store for us. Terra Sunder. This is, again, one of just those really good generic Guardian cards. Uh, I could see this being played in any Guardian, and it's also played in every existing Guardian, so I don't see any reason why this wouldn't continue to see play in the new Guardian. Cheapest Rainbow on the market is like 5 bucks. Very few up here, though. There's maybe like 10 of them under $10. Uh, then they spike relatively quickly, so if you're thinking about playing Guardian and you don't have this card, maybe now is the time. Jeeva's non-foil on the market, for those curious, is also about 5 bucks, so you might as well just go snatch up those foils. Call it a day. Macho Grande, another Guardian card that's been played in every Guardian ever. Uh, cheapest. Uh, this is specifically the Extended Art LGS promo from way back in the day, from the Everfest days. The Extended Art blue one is like two dollars for the cheapest copy on the market um i think it's a fantastic pickup again every guardian ever is going to be playing this so even if the new guardian doesn't want this you know bravo still going to want this and whatever guardian they print after is still going to want this uh i think james white's even said he regrets printing this card <laughs> so just to speak on the power level and the staying power of it 
yeah, I don't think Macho Grande is not going to be played. Blood Rush Bellow, cheapest rainbows on the market, uh, are disappearing very fast. There's four up here, or I guess five because one of them has two listings, but most of them are unverified. This one's $13. $12, $12, $12, $12. But yeah, there's like five of them for the $12 range, and most of them are unverified. And then it immediately jumps to $20. I bring this up just in case anyone wants to go ahead and take a chance on these unverified. I've never had a bad experience on TCG with unverified, but I know people are a little uh, wary and skeptical on it. So I understand that. But, you know, for those those daring individuals, I hope, uh, you know, my subscribers can can grab those four copies there. These cards are disappearing very quickly. You guys are animals. You guys are absolute animals, bro. <laughs> Cheapest cold foil silver token on the market is now $15. Kind of crazy. Just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. I would say hold off on this. Don't buy it at this price tag. Um, I just want to bring it up to say you guys are savages, like actually. Crown of Dominion, again, if we're going to be getting gold tokens in this set as like a reward for wagers, then that must imply that there's some additional benefit to gold tokens, maybe the new hero powers. The new heroes will have abilities that like synergize with gold tokens, like you could destroy a gold token to do XYZ, who knows, but we're not making gold tokens for no reason, there's obviously going to be some kind of added benefit to it. And if there is, doesn't it make sense that we would want Crown of Dominion to start ourselves with a gold token? It's entirely possible. If you've been on the fence about the cold foil or just even buying one in general, uh, maybe that's enough to put you over the edge. Cheapest rainbow foil in the market is $46. Cheapest cold foil is $63. Cracked Bauble, the cold foil holiday promo from last year. No, no, no. This is from two years ago because last year we got the Christmas gift and then the year before that we got crack, the cold full of cracked bobble. Uh, as soon as the new cracked bobble and the new uh, Santa Claus hero got announced, this card just went totally crazy. Let's look at the sales data. I have to like load more because so many sold on the 13th. It was like $2. It still hasn't moved that much. It's still like sub $5, but there's very few left on the market. Just letting you guys know, they're not totally gone. If you guys are interested in the cold foil cracked baubles, they're still there. Pummel, uh, this one was, I said I would talk about the card I liked the most as an investment from the comment section of the last video. I don't remember who left the comment. I'm so sorry. Um, it's pinned on my last video. And then this video, it is going to be talked about. It's Red Pummel. Uh, yeah, it totally makes sense. Guardian and Brute is going to want to play Pummel. They've traditionally always played Pummel, both those heroes. Well, they traditionally can always play Pummel, I suppose. Red Pummel is also ser serving like quadruple duty in that it's one of the best cards in Flesh and Blood and will always be played in every hero will think about playing this card, I suppose. Cheapest Rainbow Fools on the market are like $3 right now. You can get a set for $10. These cards all are all going to disappear one day. All these Welcome to Wraith foil cards that we take for granted now. It might take a year, two years, three years, four years. All this stuff's going to be totally wiped out of the market and gone at some point. So yeah, if you don't have a play set of Rainbow Foil Pummels, it's only $10. I think it's a pretty safe investment. I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, Quicksilver Dagger, the LGS promo. This is an Armory promo from back in the day, back in the day. Uh, again, I said it was really hard to call what the Warrior's going to want to do, whether it's playing with a dagger or a trident or a axe or a sword or whatever it's going to play with so if you are going to spec into warrior cards i would say make them cheap and make their risk or reward quite good so the fact that quicksilver dagger is only three dollars and all the room it has to go up uh you know if this is the weapon of choice for the new hero uh not that i particularly think it will but you know again the the risk reward is so you're paying such a small price to get in and if it's good then it's going to go up to like you know 20 30 dollars something like that uh, you know, example, look at the current the current cold foils of the current heroes in the meta, right? If you look at Dromai's weapon, it's like 20, 30 bucks. So, you know, if the warrior is really good, then this will go to like 20, 30 bucks. If it plays this card. Again, I think it's more likely not than yes, but this is what you're looking for in a card to invest in warriors. Something that is very cheap to get into, but has a huge upside if it winds up being good. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, and subscribe to help the algorithm help me out just a little bit later, gamers.